throw out That's a club leader, dude. Oh yeah, man, you're really good at drawing the cannabis stuff. Do you, do you like study? Yeah, I get, do you get like really strong photo reference for that sort of thing? I just love. I like cars and machines. I just get into it. Uh, and do you have industrial design? Do you make them up most of the time? Yeah, if I can. Wow. Um, well, I found the trick with cars is the reason people mostly mess up on cars is because they don't understand ellipses and tires. <laughs> like a car will live and die depending on your drawing will depend on. It will live and die depending on how you draw the tires and how it's meeting the road. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't understand how an ellipse actually works. Like um, if I'm doing a two-dimensional, uh, sorry, two-point perspective of a car. <clears throat> oh my gosh, have you just been holding that? Like that. Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Please. A lot of it's just familiarity with shape. I mean, you draw anything enough, you're just going to get better at it. But um, all right, so we've got a car from the top here, and uh, let's say it's making a turn this way. Um, if the wheel is turning, the axle usually runs this way through a car. Mm -hmm. So you would draw, the, I'll do the, I'll do that with the back tires. Draw that line, like where the axle is, and then draw, uh, give me a 90 degree angle on that exactly. And you take your elliptical tool, you figure out which one to feel right, but you stay you know, you let that dictate where it is. A lot of people will fuck this up. Like, they don't understand axles or ellipses enough. So what's, what's an ellipse tool? Or? It's just the, the cutout that has just these different ovals oh. on it. You know what I mean? It'll say, like, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, and that shows you, like, how this is, what, zero degrees, this would be 180, this would be 45, whatever a circle would look like. So because this, the front tires are turning, we're not going to follow the axle. Since they're going this way, we're going to say the axle on that tire is, is right here. So I'm going to give me uh, a 90 degree angle on that. You know. That's pretty close. And I mean, it's just a sketch, but you can already tell, you know, you've given that proper motion in the other tire, maybe it would come out here. You don't want to draw it up here, obviously, because that's not how cars work. But you would copy that and do the same thing over here. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people, professional artists, don't understand that. Um, same thing with guns. Um, I'll just do a regular revolver here. Alright, okay. So, to make this 3D, we have an axle on the barrel. So, whatever... If we draw this, that's fine, but the gun's going to be... Um, in a much harsher perspective. Okay. Now, if this was uh, more of an oval, the gun would have to be um, more like this. If it was a perfect circle, you would be behind the gun. You guys can understand that, right? Mm -hmm. So we got this um, sort of three-quarter gun. Go with this axle. Cut that. We know that that is the correct ellipse, and but you'll see people do this or get a get it wrong. Um, a down shot on a gun, people will screw up a lot. Okay. For the end of the gun, people will go like this, which is totally incorrect. There, the that so this circle right here, that's where the X would be in that circle. The proper ellipse for this barrel would be like that. It should be that X. You guys understand that? Mm. So, um, same shot of the gun, all that line, cut that, like that. Not this, that, and uh, it just infuriates me when I see artists. <laughs> like someone I don't even know, I already hate them. Uh, you have the um, the revolver part, which is the same, same rule. You have a bigger circle, but it's lined up with the rest of the gun, so you're still going to do that. Draw an X, put your ears there. Pull it out, you know, you're only looking for a section of it, and you can do those divots. I don't know what they're called. Draw the scope. That's not correct. And then in the handle, sometimes they have like a screw. The screw is going to be going this way, so that's the axle on the screw. So that would be where that. Well, this would be going 
into in there that way. <clears throat> that's not, I mean, that's not perfect, but you get the idea. So I'd say Secret to Cars is definitely this. And also, Cars have a role and pitch, personality. If a car is taking a hard right, you're gonna, it's going to be much closer on one of its wheel wells, mm -hmm. and then the other one's going to be off the ground. And, uh, you know, it's just little things like that. Yeah, you know, Frank Miller's cars are always, like, flying. They never touch the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was definitely a, a cool creative choice that he made. Yeah. Can you show us how to do speed lines? Sure. Um, you just, just draw this car speeding. Okay, yeah, I'll make it. <laughs> yes. All right, I definitely need to have... Let me just... Start. Is this about how tight your pencils get? No, it's, it's, it would be a little <laughs> tighter than that. <laughs> The thing is, I mean, to understand car is it's it's the same as a gun. You just understand geometric geometry and perspective. I mean, a good handle on cars. I mean, you get a good handle on a crane or trucks or guns. And it's all applicable to other things, you know. All right, now for, since it's turning, I'll also probably do. It's a little bit late, but draw like smoke, you know, from the front tire there. Maybe go in with some white ink after and get rid of some of that tire. <clears throat> but. Uh, so there's always a shadow right underneath the vehicle, which is easy. That's not a shadow because it's gray. <laughs> okay. Black the windows in too. Okay. So what I'll do is lay out um, with a ruler, even in perspective sometimes. I'm going to mess that up, I know. Okay, there. Draw a few these are all parallel, so it's no big trick. I'll do some in perspective later. For like a blast effect. doing this. Not that there's anything wrong with Higgins, it's just uh, normally it's not this hard, but you guys can get the gist of it. I'm not drawing them all right next to each other, they're different widths apart, and that's cool. And I'm not, I'm not that precious about it, just kind of let it happen. Sometimes I'll start off like this and whip it out, and I'll find, uh, especially on rough paper, you'll get a nice thin line. If you go the other way, you can still get thin, but it's not as thin, especially when there's no ink. I'm very conscious of thin to thick, thin to thick. I use this for rain too. I'll show you guys that after. Okay. What I would do after is let it dry, but then I would. Uh, Cross any of these lines in a very obviously wrong way, it's kind of easy and forgiving. It'll. I mean, obviously, it takes practice too, but it's not that tough of a technique, too. It is when the ink's not even. Um,
Now, as you can see, it's not very uniform. If I see